Hello again. Uh, this is going to be part three of our puzzle script tutorial. And today I'm, or I mean, in this video, it's all still the same day. We're going to be talking about adding objects and custom blocks. Okay, so let's get right into it. Um, let me share my screen. Sorry for the delay. Share away. Okay, so uh, if we want to add objects to our game, uh, let's just say we want to add spikes to the game, and then we want the player to die when they hit spikes. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to look at several different sections, and we need to add the same thing to several sections. Okay, the first thing we need to add to is our objects. The objects ourselves are themselves need to, we need to put our new object there. Then we're going to need to give it a legend, a, um, an icon in the legend. If you see each one of these, so this is the name, like background, and this is the color that it is. Then we have target, and that's the color. Okay, and then you can see that target is O in our legend. And background is period in our legend. Okay, and then these things, not only do they show up here and here, but they also show up on the collision layer. Okay, so we're gonna need to, if we wanna add a new object, it has to be added in three separate places. Okay, so I'm gonna clear these drawings. And um, I just wanna show you what this legend means as well. So we see background is a dot and the P is the player. If we scroll down and look at our layers, that's what we're seeing here. Walls are hash marks, so we can see that the walls are surrounding the entire level. The periods are the background. Our player starts here. Um, and if we control click this level, hold control and then click it, it'll load up right here and we can get a graphical version of what this is. Okay, but really what this is, is, um, you know, hash, 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 Hash. You know, that's actually what it is. That's what the computer is reading is this. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear that and let's add something. Okay, so like I said, spikes. I'm going to go down here in the orange and I'm going to call it spike. And let's give it a one color. Let's let's make it white. Okay, we just type in white. White is a reserved word that puzzle script knows. And if we try to rebuild this, we're going to get some errors in our console, right? It says object spice, spike has been defined, but no assignment to a layer. So we need to assign it to a layer. And then we also need to put it in the legend. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go down to the legend. And for spike, let's make them S. So S equals spike. Great. And now when we talk about layers, we talk about um, what hits what else, what collides with other things. That's what collision means. So if you look in our game over here, we have our player is blue and our background is green. Our player is not colliding with the background, okay? Similarly, our player is not colliding with the target. So if I move these boxes out of the way and I get on my target, my player is not colliding with the target. My player is on a, a, a layer that is above or in this case, below the target, okay? But the player does collide with walls and with crates, okay? So we see here, um, this is the first layer, the most background layer. Then this is the second layer, targets. So you can go on top of targets. And then this is the collision layer, or this is the third layer, which has um, all of the objects that hit each other. Okay, so for example, wall uh, crates will collide with walls, but crates will not collide with um, the target because crates are above the target layer. Okay, so let's clear all these. Let's reset my game. And let's say that spikes are on the same layer as target because we want our player to go on top of it. Okay, so if we rebuild, we look okay. Uh, our colors are all messed up, which isn't great. But if we re 
if we run it, it should be fine. Sometimes the colors get messed up. Just run it again, rebuild, and you should be okay. Okay, so um, we also need a rule. If our player lands on the spike, then the player dies. Okay, so what we'll do here is <coughs> we'll say um, player spike. And remember, these rules work like, hey, if you see player and spike on the same square, you can see there's no, there's no white line here. Okay, so, so that means that these are on the same square. So if the player and the spike are on the same square, then what we want to do is just have um, spike be on that layer. Okay, and let's do that in late. So it happens at the end of the frame. Let's rebuild. Uh, we didn't get any errors. And now in the level editor, we see our spike show up right here in white. So I'm gonna click this white one and I'll put a spike here. Now, if I walk to the spike, my player is gone. Okay, so that, that's successful. We did that. Uh, what happened was, and let me restart. Again, if I put a spike, let's say I put a spike here and maybe a spike here. Now we have a real puzzle because if I land on the spike, my player quote unquote dies. Okay, and if I press Z, I can undo and say, oh, you know what, maybe I have to drag the box around and put it there. Okay, because I can't walk on the spike because uh, the spike will kill me. Great, so um, let's talk very briefly about the colors of these blocks and how to make a custom block. So a custom block is basically, you need to understand that these are happening in a five by five um, square. Okay, so you have, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then similarly, one, two, three. Okay, so it's a five by five matrix, right? And so we start up here and we move to the right and then we move here, here, here. And so if we want it to be just one color, we can just say white, okay? But if let's say we wanted it to be, let me get a drawing tool out. Let's say we wanted it to be, um, look like this. So white in this one and white in this one white here and white in this one as well. But then we want these to be black. So it's like, you know, a spike on a, on a little, I don't know, like a steak or something. So we'll make that black. And then the rest we'll just have as um, nothing. We'll have them blank. Okay, so what we need to do for that is we can assign more than one color to one object. So this one is white, and then we just put a space, and then we also say black. Okay, so now it knows two colors, white and black. Now the thing to understand about these right here, these colors, which is um, helpful if you have programming background, is this is like an array, okay? And in, in an array, we have the zero element, and then we have one, and then we have two, and so on and so forth. So really, since this is an array, the zero element is defined by zero. Uh, sorry, the white, white is the first one, but it's actually zero. And then black is the second one, which is actually two. Okay, so let me erase these and start typing here then, and it might be a little more clear. Um, so background and, and blank is dot. So if I do dot, dot, zero, because zero is white, dot, dot, then I go to the next line and say dot, zero, 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 dot. Then I go dot, dot, one, dot, 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 one, dot, dot, and then finally dot, dot, one, dot, dot. Okay, now when we rebuild that, voila our spikes now look like this. 
um, because we filled it in. It has to be five across and five up and down every single time. Okay, if you do any less, you're gonna get yelled at in the editor. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was a, a quick tutorial on how to add objects and how to make custom blocks. So thanks again for stopping by and we'll see you next time.